Hi there, this is Jeanette, and this is day two of my Christmas series for 2016. Today I'll be sharing an album page that I created for my December Daily Album. This is something that I like to do when I create my album. I like to create these 6x8 pages to insert into my album. I also make some 4x6 ones as well, and that just helps to make the album very personalized um, for me and for my family, something I love to do. So I'm using the new paper pad from Whimsy. This one is so beautiful and it has these gorgeous enamel dots that match. And I wanted to use the color palette from the paper to color my fairy in. So right now I'm coloring in the skin and you can see the numbers that I use listed. They're listed in the order that I use them. And I always color from light to dark. Well, not always, but the majority of the time, I like to color from light to dark. If an area is very tiny, I may start with my darkest marker, just so that I don't have any bleeding um, over the lines. But in general, I start with my lightest and move towards my darkest and then move back backwards to blend everything out. I love this image because there's just something so, I don't know, so beautiful about it. And I love the size of the image. And I knew I wanted to create a full page for my album with it. And I'm coloring it up, like I said, with colors that are taken from the paper pack from Whimsy. You can see here I'm almost done. I'm just adding a little bit of cheek color there and then I'm blending it out so it's nice and soft. The image was stamped on Nina cardstock, which is like a smooth cardstock, which is really beautiful um, to use with Copic markers. And I stamped it with a Copic friendly ink, which is Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I find using those two um, in combination are one of the best ways to ensure a good outcome with your coloration. You really need to start with some good paper and some really good ink. I'm going to move on to the hair and I'm using some sort of gray browns for her hair. Maybe not gray is the word, maybe like ash tones for her hair. I also like to sort of color in what is hair and what's not hair I leave blank because when you're coloring sometimes it's hard to get the perspective and sometimes you may start coloring like a wing or a piece of clothing um, and sometimes you may forget to color in some hair so it's always nice to sort of base everything out with the lightest color and then you sort of know where where you're going to move forward I'm adding a little bit more of a darker shade here and you can see I'm not going quite as much or quite as far into the hair as I did with the lighter color then I'm just going to blend out with the light color leaving small areas uncolored so there's like a little highlight of white there I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'll move on to the dress and I'll be using some shades of green the image was um, on the packaging is colored with a sort of green, gray green dress, and I just couldn't get it out of my mind. So I knew that I had to do a green dress, and I knew I had to use the paper pack from Whimsy. So there wasn't really a whole lot of um, angst over what I was going to do with this image. It came very, very easily. So I'm now just adding darker colors of green to the shadowed areas, the areas where the clothing has fold lines, so they will have shadows. I'll be leaving the ribbon or the belt, I guess, of her dress. I'll be leaving that a little bit lighter, so I'm moving on with some darker colors for the dress to add more shadows where the folds are, but I won't be using these markers for the ribbon, just so that there's a little bit of contrast um, between the two. At first I thought I might color in the ribbon like a gold color, uh, but then I thought, no, I think I'm going to leave it light green and I'm going to later on put on some Wink of Stella, which is like a clear um, glitter that you can sort of brush on or, or paint onto the paper. And that'll give it enough of a difference and enough of a definition that I think keeping it the same color tone um, will be prettier. 
So as I use these darker markers, you're going to notice that I'm using them more sparingly than I did with the lighter ones. And then as I start blending, I sort of move towards the middle and I'll be using the lightest marker here to finish the blend. So I'll just continue doing the ribbon and just add a little bit more of a darker shade there for a little bit more contrast. Sometimes when you do the blend, um, you do lose a little bit of the contrast, so you have to go back in with your darker marker and, and add it again. And that's why I really like Copic markers, because you can go over them quite a few times and um, you know create that depth of color that you want. I'm going to be using the same green combinations for the leaves. You don't see me coloring them just for, um, you know, time constraints for this video. I didn't want it to be like half an hour long. So um, I left out the coloring of the leaves. Here I'm going in with a dark marker. This is E44 and I'm adding in the darker contrast color. There I went a little bit over where I wanted to be, so I just took my blender pen and just sort of moved that color aside. So here I'm just tracing where the overlaps for the hair are and um, sort of the very ends, giving it a little bit of darkness. And by doing this, I actually make her hair look a little bit lighter. So then I'm just taking my lighter marker again and just blending out any harsh lines, but still keeping some areas quite um, light and uncolored. Just making sure there's no white areas where I want my contrast to be, just filling those in, blending things out until it's exactly how I want it to be. I'm going to be using a bunch of colors for the berries. Be quite careful when you're coloring the berries with the reds because the reds do tend to bleed the most I find with the Copic markers. So a very light touch, um, but if you're careful you'll be fine. I'm using this dark green color. This is sort of a new little trick I learned from Pinterest and that is what's adding the shadow for the berries and it really does a great job. I really like it. I decided to do the wings a sort of golden light yellow color so I'm just using these markers. You can see they're quite light in color. I'll be coloring up the bell in the same way. And these as well, I'll be adding my Wink of Stella to at the end, so they'll, they will be glittery and um, they will show, show up um, quite nicely once it's all done. So once it's all colored, I'm using this Spellbinders die. I've left a link to it below. You'll find all the products linked below this video or on my blog, you'll find them linked. I'm using a metal shim to cut it out because when you cut out detailed dies like this, the metal shim makes it much easier for you to pop it all out. And I just poked some of the pieces that were still left in there. I used that little um, Tim Holtz tool to poke them out. Now I'm going to cut out the middle with a Spellbinders oval die because I want to inset this into my page. And it's kind of hard to explain, but as I do it, you'll see what I mean. I had already cut the image out with an oval, but you could see the white um, around the outside of the frame. And I didn't like that. So I took a smaller oval, the same one I had used to cut out the um, frame, and I'm just positioning it in there so that I know it's gonna be in the right spot. And I'm cutting out the angel again or the fairy. 
This is a six by eight piece of cardstock that I cut. This is the size of my December daily album. At first I thought I was gonna be using this sort of striped um, paper, but then I didn't really like it um, for the image. And then I realized I wanted this one with the sort of um, stars and the little dots. They, they almost look like they're twinkling. So that was perfect. I felt it really looked nice for the image. And sometimes, you know, what you think you're going to be using isn't what you're going to be using. Um, I'm pulling out this green paper now from the album, or not the album, the um, paper pad. And I'll just be cutting um, some small strips to put on the top of the page and the bottom of the page. I was just measuring how much I wanted it to be for width, so I decided to just cut them in half. So I'll have one on the top, one on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and just adhere that down now. And this is how I like to build my pages for my December daily album. I like to use different strips of pattern paper, um, different layers, different embellishments, just to build onto the page. Now I want my image, I don't want to glue it on top of the paper, I want to inset it right into the paper. So I'm positioning that same die I used to cut it out onto my paper and then I cut it out so I can adhere that to my page and then I can just pop the image in and it'll be like flat, all the same level. And you'll see that in a minute. So everything is all the same layer. And this way, the frame sort of sits on top. It gives it a little bit of dimension. I want to cover up the places where the two papers meet. And I usually like to do that with some ribbon. So I was trying some out. These are just pieces that I had left over from past years of December daily. And I did cut out those beautiful, delicate snowflakes. These are dies from Whimsy, and I cut those out of some glitter paper. And now I'm just starting to build the page. I'm gonna trim down the ribbon. And to adhere it, I'm just gonna use a glue dot on either side, making sure it's nice and straight. And then to make sure that the ribbon doesn't sort of, you know, push downward or upward, I'll adhere a glue dot in the middle as well. And I'll do the same thing for the top. And that ribbon just really hides where the two papers meet and it just makes the page look, I think it makes it look a little bit more special. I'm gonna glue that frame down now. I'm using some Zig glue pen this is blue, but it does dry clear, so it's pretty forgiving. And I'll just make sure to position that exactly where it needs to be and press it down. I did leave it aside a little bit to dry so that it was adhered down properly. I'm gonna be adhering these pretty snowflakes with glue dots as well, just one into the center. Just press it down. I usually put these pages in my December daily album in a page protector. So I'm not always like really, really fussy with how well I glue them down because I know that they're probably gonna stay put and if they do fall off, they'll fall into the page protector. Um, something I've learned after doing the albums for a few years. So now I'm just sort of placing these enamel dots, trying to scatter them. Um, these dots are matte. I don't know if you can tell. They're not glossy, they're matte. And I think it's really, it's really cool. I really like it. I haven't ever seen any like this before. I'm gonna be adding that Wink of Stella that I talked about to the ribbon, to her belt. And my card is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me put together this page for my December daily album. A full list of links and supplies can be found below this video on YouTube or on my blog. Thanks for watching.